Well guys, Ambi has stepped up to the plate with some new skincare products to tackle dark marks. If you weren't aware, hydroquinone is no longer sold over the counter and Ambi Fade Cream, it is, it's an icon in terms of hyperpigmentation. Comment below. I mean, people have been using Ambi Fade Cream for decades and decades as a go-to for fading dark spots. The active ingredient was hydroquinone 2%, but in 2020, because of the CARES Act, hydroquinone was removed from over-the-counter sales. And it took a while for some time, you would still see Ambi Fade Cream lingering on the shelves, but uh, towards the end of last year, the FDA really cracked down. I wanna talk about the Even and Clear Fade Serum. The Even and Clear Fade Serum is a retinol serum. Now, retinol is a great ingredient for addressing hyperpigmentation. Retinol, when you apply it to your skin, your skin will convert it to something called retinoic acid, and that can help in uh, not only fading and lightening existing dark spots, but it actually may help in preventing more dark spots from occurring. Retinol is also really beneficial for just smoothing out the skin surface, getting a more even skin tone. It's wonderful as an ingredient for fading post-acne dark marks. And of course, retinol has anti-aging benefits. It can smooth wrinkles with ongoing use by boosting up collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin. Retinol is an attractive alternative in terms of an over-the-counter cosmetic for fading dark spots because in contrast to hydroquinone, retinol can be used indefinitely. If you know anything about hydroquinone, you know that while it's the gold standard for addressing hyperpigmentation, it can only be used for a limited time because if you use it continuously for a long time, you pose the risk of side effects like something called pseudoochronosis. In contrast, retinol is safe to use indefinitely. The only exception is that we do recommend you stop using retinol if you become pregnant. So as far as an over-the-counter ingredient, it is a safer alternative, but it certainly can be irritating. If you've ever used retinol before, you know it causes a lot of dryness and peeling in the beginning. And if a retinol is too irritating, in the case of hyperpigmentation, that irritation can actually worsen the hyperpigmentation. So if you're going to pursue this product, then I suggest, if you've never used a retinol especially, to introduce it into your routine slowly. You're going to want to apply just a pea-sized amount in a thin film to a clean face, and you're going to do this in the evening. When you first get the product, try just using it one night a week for a few weeks, then increase to two nights a week. Then after that, increase to every other night. Eventually increase to a point where you can use it every night with no dryness, no peeling, no irritation. It may take some time and patience on your, on your part, but it certainly will make the process go a lot more smoothly and decrease the risk that the retinol will end up being too irritating for your skin. And ultimately, again, that's gonna take you several steps backwards in your journey to correct any hyperpigmentation. Importantly, when we're talking about any skin issue, but especially hyperpigmentation, wearing sunscreen is a must. Regardless of how your skin reacts to sunlight, regardless of the time of the year, when it comes to fading hyperpigmentation, really dialing in your sunscreen use can actually make a huge difference in terms of the journey to fade hyperpigmentation. Even sunlight that comes through the window glass depending on where you're positioned in a room, can actually aggravate and make hyperpigmentation more stubborn to fade. And visible light that comes from the sun mostly can also lead to more stubborn hyperpigmentation. So if you're trying to fade discoloration, I definitely strongly encourage good sun protective behaviors, wearing sunscreen, uh, seeking shade when you're going to be outdoors for a prolonged period of time, wearing hats, and also, you know, schedule your outdoor activities during a point of the day where the sun is not as intense. Those little behaviors, they actually add up when it comes to fading hyperpigmentation. Um, and with retinol, it's an ingredient that makes your skin overall a lot more sensitive to really anything, including the sun. Now, it doesn't necessarily increase the risk of a sunburn, but it may, may make you feel a little bit more sensitive in the sun, get red, stinging, irritation more easily. So the sun protection piece is key. Overall though, retinol can make the skin a bit more sensitive, especially in the beginning. And for that reason, when you're going through this process of introducing it slowly into your routine, building up to being able to use it on a nightly basis, I don't suggest trying out or incorporating other active ingredients that might be too irritating, especially alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid, lactic acid, or salicylic acid. If you're using them alongside retinol, 
they certainly can make the irritation more significant for you. So just focus on the retinol. If that's, if that's the route that you're going to take with an over-the-counter product, just focus on getting used to it in the beginning and introducing it very slowly. It takes a lot of patience. In addition to retinol though, this product has some other ingredients in it that are beneficial for hyperpigmentation, namely niacinamide. Niacinamide is a B vitamin, but it can do a lot of good for the skin. That being said, some people do find that it burns and stings and is irritating, but if you tolerate it, it has a lot to offer. Not only is it good for reducing inflammation in the skin, and again, that inflammation, say from irritation, is what can actually make hyperpigmentation more stubborn. So niacinamide can kind of calm things down and help the retinol work in your favor for fading the hyperpigmentation. Niacinamide though also can help fade the hyperpigmentation by itself. It does that by inhibiting the transfer of little pigment packets from the cells that make pigment to neighboring skin cells, the keratinocytes. So ultimately that's going to help in reducing hyperpigmentation for you. Niacinamide has some other skin benefits too beyond its role in addressing hyperpigmentation. Because it's anti-inflammatory, it can help with redness. So if you're someone who has acne that heals with redness, you may be interested in this product. It's marketed towards people with hyperpigmentation. When it comes to deeper skin tones, there's a lot of conversation always around hyperpigmentation. But also, I think a neglected territory when it comes to deeper skin tones especially is redness because redness doesn't look the same on all skin tones. It's, redness is most obvious on people who are a paler skin type, but with people who have deeper skin tones, redness can actually appear more violet to brown and often be missed, especially if you're seeing a healthcare provider who may maybe doesn't have the training in dermatology to identify redness in deeper skin tones. So all that to say, if you are dealing with some redness, niacinamide can also help with that as well. Niacinamide has anti-acne properties. Uh, we don't exactly know why that is, but it does appear to be a beneficial ingredient for people who have acne and breakout prone skin, maybe because it's anti-inflammatory. And that's gonna be a good thing for you if you're someone who's dealing with a lot of breakouts that heal with discoloration and or redness. Niacinamide also has anti-aging benefits for the skin. It can help probably by just reducing inflammation upon exposure to environmental stressors, like ultraviolet radiation from the sun, infrared radiation, pollution. I mean, we're exposed to a lot. And so niacinamide may help to kind of quelch some of that environmental stress in our skin. The Fate Serum has some ingredients that I like to classify as supporting roles. What do I mean by that? They help in providing support to your skin barrier to keep the skin moisturized. And ultimately that helps you out a lot in minimizing irritation. It also just helps the skin look healthier, have a more even radiant tone overall, simply by addressing the needs of the barrier function of our skin. Remember the skin is a barrier, it keeps irritating things out and it prevents water from exiting. And so when all that is teed up and working well, your skin looks a lot better. This product has ceramides in it. It has sodium hyaluronate, a humectant that helps to hydrate up the top layer of the skin. Ultimately that can smooth out the skin surface. This product has ceramides and cholesterol. These are uh, fats naturally present in the lipid barrier, but when our skin's dry and irritated, these things can be lacking and replenishing them through a product that you put on the skin can be beneficial for helping get things back on track. Zinc gluconate is a polyhydroxy acid that is very hydrating, can help with water retention, and also can just help smooth out and very, very gently, uh, conservatively help improve skin cell turnover, smoothing out the skin surface. I wanna address an ingredient in this that I often get questions about, and that is isopropyl myristate. Isopropyl myristate is commonly found in any skincare products and a lot of people are worried that it's going to clog their pores because they stumble across blogs, websites that list pore clogging ingredients and isopropyl myristate is often listed as one. And I have to tell you, you don't need to worry about isopropyl myristate in products uh, because those lists are based off of old antiquated uh, studies and they don't necessarily translate to real world use of isopropyl myristate in topical products. For example, the prescription acne treatment, tretinoin, has isopropyl myristate and it is, you know, a tried and true treatment for acne. It helps a lot of people's acne. If it truly were pore clogging, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't work to treat acne. So those are the ingredients in this. What do I think about it? I have tried 
tried it out myself and I really like the texture. It's nice, it's lightweight, it's hydrating, um, it's not greasy, it's not heavy. I really like that there is no fragrance in this. The other thing I really like about this is that it's pretty affordable, $9.97 for one ounce. I'm gonna compare it to another product that I love and frequently recommend, the CeraVe Skin Renewing Retinol Serum. The CeraVe product has many similar ingredients. It has niacinamide, it has a cholesterol, it has ceramides, it's a serum, same volume, you get an ounce of product, but the CeraVe product is $19.97. I wanna draw your attention to that because I always recommend that, that retinol. But, um, and the reason I recommend that retinol is a few things. The ingredients, the formula, it's a good product, but also L'Oreal is a big company and they put a lot into their R&D of their formulations, product development. So I've always had a lot of confidence in their retinol. But you can't ignore the elephant in the room that the ingredients are very similar, the textures are very similar, but the Ambi One is half the price. So where do you go from here? Do you abandon the CeraVe product in pursuit of the Ambi One? Is the Ambi One going to deliver the same results for half the price? Here's the thing, it's really hard to tell that just by me using it and me going over the ingredients because while the ingredients may be similar, the textures may be similar, we won't be able to ever predict how these products actually stack head to head. There can be a lot of variation from product to product in terms of the efficacy of the retinol. Now, Ambi has been around for a long time. I'm not super familiar with how much they put into their R&D in comparison to L'Oreal, but I would tell you this. If you are someone who is using the CeraVe retinol, you like it, you see good results, but you want something less expensive, you may entertain trying the Ambi one because this is a cosmetic, remember, at the end of the day. It's a cosmetic that supports certain skin outcomes. If you find that the Ambi one is not meeting your expectations, is not delivering on what you were getting from the CeraVe product, well then just switch back. But if you like the Ambi one, you find it's just as good, it works just as well for you, now you're saving $10, which that adds up. I mean, with $10, that can buy you a cleanser that can buy you your sunscreen, which you need to be wearing. So um, consider it. Overall though, I do think this product is worth giving a try. Now, if you've never used retinol before, is this a good first retinol? Sure, truthfully, any retinol that you buy in the drugstore is going to be a you know, reasonable first retinol. There's nothing about retinol that you buy in the drugstore that makes it beginner friendly or not. Uh, this is kind of a myth that I see perpetuated in like reels, like the best retinols for beginners. Retinol is an ingredient. You buy it in the store, you know, it's like saying the best laundry detergent for beginners. Like, you know, a college student doing laundry for the first time can use the same laundry detergent as, you know, their mom or dad who's been doing their laundry for them for years and years. So all that to say, you're the consumer. I hope this information helps you in choosing which one to buy. And we've merely scratched the surface here in terms of what is available as far as retinols in, that you can buy over the counter. There are many out there and I have a lot of reviews on different ones. So, you know, you can go searching around on my channel. Maybe you'll find another one that is more up your alley. But yeah, I think, you know, I chose to compare it to the CeraVe one because the ingredients are very, very similar as a whole. So that's that. But let's move on to another product that's new from Andy, Ambi, the Even and Clear Fade Cream. I have to bring this product up because, listen, if you didn't realize that hydroquinone is no longer sold over the counter and you're somebody, you know, who for years and years, anytime you got like, I don't know, a bug bite, a pimple that was healing with a dark mark, you went out and picked up Ambi Fade Cream, you became comfortable with using it, knowing what to expect with it. Things have changed, okay? Things have changed. The Ambi Fade Cream that you have always been using, this is not the same thing anymore. This, this new product, it's not the same. The thing that you were using before is no more. That doesn't exist anymore, okay? So we're starting fresh with something totally different and totally new. And the reason I point that out is because this new product, if you're not careful, you pick it up, you may not realize in smaller font, it says no hydroquinone. Um, all right, let's talk about the ingredients in this new thing. It's got niacinamide, which we talked at length about 
um, at the beginning of the video, all the benefits of niacinamide for fading hyperpigmentation. It also has aloe vera in it, which aloe vera from the plant, um, it does have compounds in it, allicins, that uh, can actually be helpful for fading hyperpigmentation. Now, I don't recommend going out and getting the aloe plant and smearing it on your skin because it has many compounds in it that are very irritating to the skin. Cosmetic formulators and what's actually used in skincare products, they filter all that out. So it's you know not as much of an issue. This also has sodium hyaluronate, that hydrating ingredient that's going to improve uh, moisture retention, scatter light, improve the skin uh, tone just by you know making things more smooth, hydrated, plump. This also has ascorbic acid. That's a form of vitamin C, which is an antioxidant. It may help combat. Um, oxidative stress that would contribute to hyperpigmentation. Although ascorbic acid as an ingredient isn't very stable and its penetration into the skin is limited. I have to point out though, this product has fragrance in it. The fragrance is strong. It's actually a nice, pleasant scent. Kind of smells like cucumber aloe, but it's really strong and it lingers. The formula of this product overall is a very heavy, thick, rich cream. I actually really like the consistency of it, but the consistency being so heavy with that heavy, lasting fragrance, I can't hack this on my face. It gives me a headache. And then of course, fragrance is a common allergen in skincare products. So if you're allergic, you would have to avoid this. And it can be irritating, which for people who have hyperpigmentation they're trying to fade, the last thing you want is to go go adding irritation to, to the mix. Now, this bad boy is $8.99 for an ounce, but I'm telling you, now is a time where you, as, a, as an ambi loyalist, because I know you're out there, this is a time where you need to make a decision, and let me guide you. Because this new product, this new fade cream without hydroquinone, ambi is no longer, ambi is no longer the top dog. We've got tons of products very similar to this that I think could offer you very similar benefits at a fraction of the price. Specifically, you need to check out the Gold Bond Pure uh, Pure Moisture Face and Body Lotion featured in my 2022 Best Budget Skincare. $4.99 for 5.5 ounces versus Ambi's new Fade Cream, $8.99 for an ounce. The Gold Bond product has niacinamide, so that's gonna be good for hyperpigmentation. It does not have aloe, but it has uh, urea, which is really good for softening the skin and improving skin texture and may help in accelerating the rate of fading of hyperpigmentation. It also has uh, 3-O-ethyl ascorbic acid, a form of vitamin C that may get into the skin a little bit better, is a lot more stable than ascorbic acid, which the Ambi product has, uh, and may offer some, some benefit in reducing oxidative stress in the skin. Um, it also has gluconolactone, a polyhydroxy acid that's going to help with addressing hyperpigmentation and smoothing out the skin surface. And it has ceramides, and sodium hyaluronate. So it's good supporting ingredients for the skin barrier. Um, so you're getting the, the niacinamide, but you're getting it in a product that is less expensive and free of that fragrance, which is, is you know, if you're sensitive to fragrance, it, it's quite strong in the Ambi product. So this is, you know, I, I wanted to make this video because it's a turning point. You know, a, many of you all watch a lot of my videos and, and you already know the, the deal with Ambi and how it's changed. I've got a lot of videos explaining the, the CARES Act and, and why it was removed. I'm gonna link those down below in the description box. So if you wanna go back and watch those, you, you, you should. Um, but, so a lot of you guys who have been watching for a while, you know the, the story. But I know Ambi has, you know, loyalists out there who are familiar with the fade cream. I mean, it's, it's like a, it's like an icon. It's gone though. It's gone, it's no more. And this new fade cream, you know, you might be, you might be duped into thinking, oh yeah, my good old Ambi fade cream. No, totally different, no longer has hydroquinone. And what it has in it now isn't necessarily bad aside from the very strong headache inducing fragrance, but what it has in it now is not unique to justify the price point for it. So look around. I mentioned the Gold Bond product, but there are many other moisturizers out there that are a lot less expensive that have niacinamide. Um, and, and so, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to just stick with this Ambi scented one, unless, you know, you like, like it, then by all means, but important to know that you have options. All right, y'all, that's a wrap up of these two new products from Ambi. 
Uh, I think the retinol is really promising. So give that a consideration, you know, the next time you're shopping around for a retinol because it's competitively priced with a good formulation. The retinol, if I didn't mention, is also encapsulated, which helps to allow for a more slow and sustained release into the skin that can be beneficial. Um, so give it a consideration, you know, I, I, it de definitely is a good product and I, I like it. But pass on, pass on the new, altered fade cream. It's, it's not, in my opinion, it's, it's not unique. All right, you guys, speaking of retinols, on the end slate, I'm going to link my recent video reviewing Gold Bond's uh, body and face retinol. So check that one out, another great value for your dollar. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.